What's up creators, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I color graded the Pixel 7 video that I uploaded a couple of weeks ago. And some of you guys in this channel and also in the Spanish one were very curious on how I achieved that color grading from that very harsh and horrible image straight out from the phone. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve but before that I'm going to tell you how I shot the video straight out from camera. Now the Pixel 7 has a decent enough camera for a phone, it's a mid gamma phone and it can shoot in 10 bit in the color depth meaning that it can capture a wide variety of colors. Now the problem is that even in pro mode you can shoot in log on even not even in a flat picture profile that's a big difference compared to the iPhones now the iPhones do allow you to shoot in log and therefore you can achieve a very clean and very high dynamic range image from your phone and as the pixel 7 does not have log and has a very basic camera with no controls of your exposure and saturation I had to download a third-party app which is filmic pro and in that app you have very professional tools you have a waveform you have false color you have gamma curves so therefore you can use log formats and flat picture profiles and that's exactly what I used. Now let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and I'll continue explaining. Okay so here in DaVinci Resolve we have the Pixel 7 project as you can see it's a very simple project with a single video track over here and every single clip is edited in the exact same manner. Now right here we have the final results this is a clip and as you can see it has a very moody color grade but let's see the before. Now this is before without the color grading and looks terrible straight up from camera. You can see even though we shot in log, the sensor of the Pixel 7 really battles to achieve uh, the correct amount of information in the shadows. As you can see there's basically no information in these parts and also in the highlights in other clips. Now the sensor in cell phones or smartphones is so small that it really battles uh, when the ISO is raised. So right here I had to raise the ISOs to have correct information in the shadows and therefore we have as a result very prominent or very notorious noise over here. You can see how it's very colorful and you can even see those red dots that appear when the sensor is failing to capture any type of information. You can see these types of aberrations in uh, astrophotography, those red dots are horrible particularly in small sensors, APS-C sensors. In here, we have an even smaller sensor, so it was really battling in the lighting situations to capture the log gamma curve. Before we jump into the color green, I did apply two effects into these videos. Uh, the most important one is noise reduction. Of course, as you can see, I added noise reduction. If we apply it, the image is a bit more soft, but we're reducing that colorful noise that is added with the high ISO in a small sensor. And the other effect that I applied you can see it over here, which are these light beams, which is basically a glow effect, just trying to replicate the diffusion effect. And this one, I just set it into vertical, trying to hide away the overexposed parts and the clipping in the highlights. As you can see, there's no information in these parts of the image. So those are the two effects uh, that I applied before going into color grade, just to reduce a bit of the aberrations and the abnormalities of shooting log format in the Pixel 7. Now let's jump into the color grading. So here we have this clip in the color grading and I'm gonna say that this edit isn't gonna be too complex. It's just gonna be a very easy and fast way to edit. I may explain some points, but I already made a tutorial explaining step by step on what I do in the color grading department when I edit with notes and explaining every single tool and what it does. You can check out that video up here in the cards. That's a more uh, step by step for beginners tutorial. In this case, I'm just gonna go quite quickly explaining what I did to achieve that color grading. Now today I'm going to work with five nodes in particular, so it's not a very complex edit. So let's start off by adding a node. We can add it with Alt or Option S on your keyboard and we can add a node over here. And this one is going to be correction. Now this video of course was shot in log and log obviously always has to be corrected. So I'm going to label it first. Now normally I would use color management or color space transform or even a personal lot or a lot that's included in DaVinci Resolve. But this log format is created by Filmic Pro and we don't have the lot to convert it. So any of the regular methods that I use are not going to work. So we have to do it manually. Now for that I'm going to use the tone curve over here. So we want to achieve more contrast in this image and also by lowering the shadows we want to eliminate all these noise in, that appears mostly in the shadows it's more noticeable than in the highlights. So first of all we can add a bit more contrast by lowering the shadows then the highlights also I'm going to lower them down 
and then the whites i'm gonna lower them down but as you can see there's basically no information there's a lot of clipping going on in the, the sky over here so we can't lower it too much otherwise it will turn towards the grayish so we have an image which is a bit more contrasted and less log like next we're going to return a bit of the saturation just going to pull the saturation up maybe around the 90 percent and another thing that i'm going to do in this node is correct the white balance as you can see this image is very warm why because my phone was constantly changing the white balance automatically so in filmic pro i had to set it in a certain kelvin and the kelvin that i selected just to edit in a more seamless manner throughout all my clips was a bit too high so in this case what i'm going to do is select the rgb parade over here and as you can see obviously the red is more high or higher than the blues indicating that the image is not balanced all these three channels should be in a similar manner represented so right here what i have to do is <clears throat> well maybe use the color bars that i normally use for more complex edits but in this case i'm just going to lower the temperature and notice how the reds start to drop and the blues start to rise so something around these lines, the colors are more balanced. Obviously the greens are very high and that's basically because, well, we have a lot of greens in our image, but I'm just gonna leave it like that. Our image is a bit less warm and more balanced. Now this correction wasn't scientific by any manner, but it's not gonna matter too much because I have the color grading that I want in mind and it's gonna be a very muted and desaturated one. So let's add the second note, which is gonna be our color grading mode. Now we can add it by option S or Alt S on your keyboard to create a node after the one that we have selected. You can also select a node and then select Shift S and you're gonna create a node before the one that you selected. So that's a great way you can start organizing your nodes. In this case, for this tutorial, for this edit, I did not go into the manual settings. The manual settings, of course, you can use the RGB channels or the tone curve. You can use the creative color um, curves over here. You can also add colors into the wheels. But in this case, I went with a very simple and fast edit, just using a lot from the edit like LUT pack. Now this LUT I already loaded is the Becky and Chris LUT that I have in the edit like LUT pack V1. And it basically is a very desaturated and muted LUT. This LUT is just the conversion of the preset that we created in the edit like series for Becky and Chris. So if you wanna check out that tutorial link up here, in this case, I just converted it into a LUT. You can always just uh, copy the settings that you applied in Lightroom into your video editing software and you should achieve a similar results. So in this case, immediately our image looks great. You can deactivate a node by selecting it and command D or control D. As you can see, this is before, and this is after, and this is our starting point, and now it's looking quite nice. Okay, next up, let's create another node, and this one is gonna be called Blur. Now, what I want to achieve in this node is create a bit more of depth. This image is very flat. Cell phone cameras have a very wide angle lens, therefore it's very gonna be very hard to create any depth with those lenses, and also the aperture is wide closed. So everything in this image is in the same plane of focus. As you can see, um, these leaves in the foreground are in focus, also the background is in focus everything is completely in focus bar this plant over here which is very close to the lens so what i want to do is create the effect that this was shot with a longer lens or with a camera so what i'm going to do is use the power windows now the power windows are just tools or shapes that you can apply into your image to edit specific parts of your video so in this case we can apply a square a circle or even a polygon or a custom shape polygon or a gradient in this case i'm going to select the circle I'm gonna expand it just to blur out the borders of the image that have the elements closest to the camera. So I'm just gonna drag the circle up, just create an ellipse, an oval over here, add some feather just to make the seamless uh, blurring effect going towards the center. Maybe you make it a bit bigger, something around these lines. And then we can always activate the highlight that will reveal our mask. And as you can see, we're selecting everything in the center in this case. The gray parts are the things that we're not selecting. So we want the opposite. So we're going to select this button over here to invert our mask. And there we have it. Now we're going to go into the blur. And here I'm just going to amp up the radius ever so slightly. Not too much, otherwise it's completely unnatural. Just add a bit more blur into the borders of our image. Yeah, something like that. And there we have it, now our image has a bit more depth or a bit more layers to it. Next, we're gonna create another node, and this one is gonna be called gradients or vignetting, depending on the video that we're in. Another node. So in this case, we're gonna apply a gradient, but for other clips, maybe I will apply a vignette. So this node will be altered depending on 
the clip that I'm editing. So right here I'm going to apply a gradient and the purpose of this gradient is going to be to darken the lower part of our image that contains a lot of the noise created by the small sensor but also to draw the attention of the viewer into these plants in the center and also into the highlights. So we're going to use windows once again in this case we're going to create a gradient and if we activate the highlight we can see that the horizontal line uh, basically dictates where the gradient starts we can just turn it something around these lines and then the arrow will uh, will determine the amount of feathering that we apply so we don't want to go up too high we're just going to darken these parts of the image and then i'm just going to lower a bit of the lift that will control the shadows just lowering just a bit adding a bit more contrast and then lowering the gamma as well that controls the midtones just a bit something around these lines just making a bit more of a dramatic image now as you can see these power windows that are applied to specific nodes everything that we alter in that node will be affected or will be masked out by the window that we applied so any edit that i make right here will only be applied to the dark parts of the gradient so for example if in the shadows i would add a purple it will only be applied into that part of the gradient uh, the windows they're great tools to have to edit specific parts of your image okay let's add the fifth and final node now the fifth and final node i'm going to call it uh, final corrections now this node i'm going to use it to compensate the exposure depending on the clip as i said i'm going to copy these nodes that we created into every single clip on my timeline so in this node i'm going to correct the exposure and contrast much like the exposure and contrast sliders that i use in lightroom to compensate for the preset in every single image now in this node also i'm going to add some mid detail now mid detail is very similar to clarity in photo editing apps as you can see you have it over here in the general color or primary color wheels and mid detail will add contrast to small parts of the image in the midtones as you can see if i amp it up to 100 percent it's basically doing the effects of clarity in lightroom so i'm going to reset it in this case i'm going to go around the 30 percent just to add a bit more punch and sharpness to our image a sharpness that we reduced by applying the noise reduction filter now of course this value will be altered depending on this image that i'm editing so of course i'm leaving it into the last one so basically this is how i edited a single clip and then i copied the settings into the other uh, clips on the timeline so we can see the before and after this is before and as you can see the image is basically horrible a lot of noise uh loss of information in the shadows and the sky as well and then we created this moody effect just to work with the aberrations and the problems that this image has from the start and creating a moody image in the process so right here we just color graded this clip with five adjustment nodes well what happens if we want to apply this same edit with these nodes into other clips on our timeline no we don't have to edit them manually step by step once again the only thing that we have to do is select them Control c or command v to copy them then we're going to open up our clip timeline and we're going to select the clip or the clips that we want to apply the same edit to so we're going to select them and Control v on your keyboard and as you can see our edit has been applied to the other clips including all the five nodes that we added now another way to do this is by going into your edit tab if you don't want to step into the color grading tab and we want to do is select our clip right click copy and then we're going to move on to our wanted clip that we want to paste the settings selected paste attributes and remember to mark color correction and select apply and immediately our edit will be edited with the same amount of nodes and all the adjustments that we did so for this project what i did is select the entire timeline and pasting the attributes just to copy paste all the nodes that we created in that single clip and then i went clip by clip adjusting the final two nodes so for example right here we have this clip that we've already pasted our settings but as you can see the gradient filter is not quite working right here because it's just darkening the lower part of our image so what i did over here is maybe deactivate the gradient over here by clicking the symbol and then maybe selecting the circle to create a vignette and inverting our selection so therefore we don't want a gradient in this image we want a vignette and the same thing can be applied for the final corrections in this case maybe the image is a bit too dark so in this final node i would correct a bit of the exposure just putting it up or putting it down and maybe adjust the mid detail the clarity just bring it up and it looks fantastic so that's basically what i did for every single clip 
in my timeline. So there you have it guys, that's how I color graded the Pixel 7 video from a couple of weeks ago. I hope I answered some of your questions and this video was helpful. And remember that the LUT that I used to color grade this clip was the Becky and Chris edit like LUT that you can find in the edit like LUT pack V1. Link up here if you want to check it out. In there you can find also my personal presets that I used to edit my photos and my LUTs that I used to edit my videos every single day. So without further ado guys, if you can support me in that manner, I'd be very thankful. If not, just like the video, share it with a friend. I'm Tony Fuentes. Cheers to all of you and I'll see you in the next one.